Greetings everyone and welcome to BrickCats. Today I'm reviewing this amazing looking droid tri-fighter from designer Grimder. As always, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, leaving a comment, or supporting what I do in any other way you see fit. I greatly appreciate it. The Tri-Fighter was an advanced starfighter specifically designed for fighting with the Republic Navy. Actually quite small in canon, its small profile made it dif difficult to hit in a dogfight. The Tri-Fighter was equipped with more advanced droid brains than standard droid fighters. Without any substitutions for this, part, this model, I got 4 stores and $72 without shipping and tax, or about $101 with shipping and tax. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and model features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience and the model's integrity, and I close out with my overall impression on, and pricing information in the conclusion. If you're watching this review, I assume that you've bought the instructions or are interested in buying them. I also assume a basic level of familiarity with Bricklink's ordering system and LEGO nomenclature. I only use genuine LEGO bricks and I always purchase the instructions. I create these reviews for my own personal enjoyment and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. Grimder's Tri-Fighter measures a hair over 7 inches long, 4.25 inches tall, and 4.25 inches wide. The Tri-Fighter was only 5.4 meters long in canon, so this is clearly not minifigure scale, nor is it intending to be. The Tri-Fighter's name obviously derives from the three wings or fins that surround the droid's brain module, and this printed piece from one of the uh, official droid Tri-Fighter sets fits in perfectly. The designer has made the fins out of five sections, connected by toe balls and sockets. You can kind of see the toe balls in between the sections right there. This does a pretty good job representing the overall shape, and even these small ridge structures inside the curve here, represented with 1x1 one one tiles and clips, are canon accurate. I also like that this uh, little section right here next to the engine has this inverted slope that you can see there to kind of approximate a smooth transition between the fin and the engine section. Grimder has covered the sections um, of the fins in slopes and tiles except for this middle one here which I'll get to in a second and this makes for a pretty smooth look uh, despite the um, necessary interruptions or the gaps. Um, and I think this looks really good. I definitely think it looks a lot better than if he had left them with studs on. With studs showing, rather. The middle section is black right here and represents the black vents. And I like that these are a different size than the other four segments. And these are noticeably different in width uh, in the ships that we see in Kamen as well. So very well done with the proportions and the shaping here. The color scheme overall is predominantly dark blue, sand blue, and dark bluish gray, as you can see. The Tri-Fighter doesn't show up much in canon, as, well, as much as I originally thought it did, and these colors seem fine to me, although I think you could certainly make the argument that sand blue is the odd color out. However, I do like the sand blue, as it makes the color scheme a bit lighter, even if it's not 100% accurate. There's also no good way to represent the CIS markings on the fins, specifically the interlocking triangle pattern that would appear on these two sections here. Without a sticker sheet, um, that's just not going to happen, and stickers are pretty expensive these days for the Tri-Fighter, so I did not buy them to try them out. I really love the bullhorns used for the droid's eyes on this little assembly in front. This is pretty much the perfect piece for this scale. The central cannon and the three wing cannons are all present. Uh, I built them in black as specified, but I think they should probably be dark bluish gray to match the central one. These pieces do come in dark bluish gray, this new uh, 2L bar will stop, and the bar holder, and I think the roller skate, or sorry, the ice skate would come in flat silver to sort of match that if you wanted to do it. The way this model is constructed is pretty clever with these Technic pulleys. Uh, you can kind of see one here, and their hole pattern. This is what allows, uh, well, this is the logical way to divide the circle into thirds. And the holes in the pulley also allow cliff and bar connections for each end of the fins. So the way this is connected, you can see one of the cliff and bar connections here, and the other one's kind of hidden back here, but basically you um, attach this end of the fin to a clip, um, to a bar rather, with a clip right there. 
Underneath the fighter, the two missile launchers are well represented with a couple of round bricks and bricks with fins and topped off by these spear tip pieces. I really love how these angles work out and it's just perfect so that these missiles are parallel to the long, ax long axis of the fighter. I think the missiles might be a little too big, but um, again, this is not really a big deal. Uh, the couple of shots that we see of the missiles, it's pretty quick and uh, they're usually the ones with those... Um, what are they called? The little droids to try and destroy starships. Moving to the back, the three engines surround this cone shape assembly, and there's some nice trans neon orange dishes before the engine glow. I was glad to see that these engines are pretty closely clustered together, and this is a huge improvement over the official sets that never really got this particular aspect of the Tri Fighter correct. There's no stand for this model, which is unfortunate, but there's not really an obvious connection point or mounting method for it given the kind of odd angles. You might be able to rest it on something here and there with um, maybe the front pulley section and I'll just move these out of the way. And this section right here, this clip, um, these are the two most solid points to rest it on um, on the bottom. So uh, another option I thought maybe you could rig something to suspend this by the top fin, but that gets kind of large. Um, and also probably not very stable. But luckily, this model does sit down on its fins pretty well, so maybe a stand is not strictly necessary. It would be nice, but again, I am just not quite sure how you would do it and make it look good. In my opinion, this model looks really good. I like the construction of the fins in larger, more solid looking sections. Uh, I really love that bullhorn piece for the eyes. It kind of gives the droid the appropriate sinister look. And the colors the model uses look great as well. This model requires 87 elements and 500 pieces. The three minifigure utensil tool screwdriver, wide head, three rib handle, part 11402A in black. It's quite expensive these days, and I re recommend replacing these with the newer R2L with stop ring in black, part 78258. And these are used for the wing cannons. The screwdrivers were specified simply because this element was not out when Gremdrew designed the model. Perfectly understandable. And like I said earlier, you could substitute dark bluish gray for the R2L with stop ring if you wanted it to match the central cannon. The 12 plate round 1x1 with flower edge, 4 knobs, pedals, part 33291 in magenta. I'm not sure if this is because the part is supposed to be hidden or if it's recreating a detail I haven't been able to locate. But I think this is actually quite a visible element. Uh, well, not quite a visible element, but you can kind of just get a peek of some magenta here and there. Let me see where the best spot is. So you can see one kind of down here. There's one just in there and you know just if you turn this around a little bit you'll just catch some glimpses you can see one under here so I don't think this is as hidden as perhaps the designer thought um, if, like I said it might be a detail I'm just not seeing in the pictures I can find online uh, but the magenta is pretty visible and it just contrasts very starkly with the rest of the color scheme. So I recommend changing these to reddish brown, and this shouldn't result in any increased cost, but it helps blend in a little better. The designer has specified the older type of modified tile with clip, part 2555 in dark bluish gray. There are 26 of them, and they're mostly inside the curved sections here. And I chatted with Grumder a bit, and he constantly chose the 2555s over the newer 15712 modified tiles to more accurately represent the details we see on the fighter in the movies and Clone Wars show. I definitely agree that the older clips look better, however these will likely be more expensive than the newer clips. And you can see, like, here is a newer one, and compared to the rest of them are the older model. The following elements are specified in white, and these are mostly hidden, so any neutral color will be fine. And this is a model that you'll definitely benefit buying from Pick a Brick, especially for the following elements. This is not likely enough to pass the free shipping and handling thresholds for bestseller or standard, standard items, and this is the model for which you'll, you'll realize the most savings the more you get from Pick a Brick.
The Tri-Fighter instructions contain 172 steps, and each part or subassembly in each step is outlined in red against a white background. I didn't have any problems with viewing angles, and you're typically adding just a few pieces in each step, so the pacing is fine. In all, I think this model took me about 90 minutes without any sorting ahead of time. That 90 minutes probably could have been a bit shorter, and the sequence of the instructions is a bit of a challenge. In my chat with the designer, I explained the following issues, and hopefully he will improve them in the near future. Throughout the process of building the curve sections, the instructions have you inserting brackets in between pieces that are already in place, meaning you have to remove the pieces you previously connected to continue. These brackets should be added in the previous subassembly. For example, in step 32, you need to move the wedge you installed in step 31 to get this bracket in place. The second issue I have with sequencing is that the three sections are essentially, or the three fins rather, so all these, are essentially the same in construction. So logically, you would expect to see a 3x by all the subassemblies and some kind of note to account for small color differences. However, the instructions have you going through all five subassemblies for the top fin, and then they tell you to go back to page 25 to start over. Not only is this, quite frankly, really annoying, page numbers aren't included in the instructions, so you have to look at the page number in your PDF viewer, which uh, on Windows is kind of a pain, and preview on a Mac, not the most convenient thing, so I think at least the step numbers should be included. But there's also a significant omission in steps 144 and 169, both of which tell you to go back to page 47 for this subassembly right next to the engine, so this rearmost um, section of the fin here. The instructions should include a note to make this cheese slope that you can barely see right here, dark bluish gray, instead of dark blue, as it is in the top fin here. So unless you happen to notice that this cheese slope is dark bluish gray in the graphic, um, you'll make, it'll make you think that you don't have the right pieces. Finally, in my conversation with Gremder, he gave me a tip that would be really useful to include in the instructions as well. Before you put these fins on to, or before you connect them to the other, um, the front section here and the back section, if you press the fins down on a flat surface like a table, it straightens them out. And definitely do it, definitely do this before you connect them to the hull. Otherwise, this will look pretty crooked. Since the toe balls um, can move pretty easily, you can end up with kind of a wavy fin here. You don't want that. But to end this section on a good note, the designer stated that the instructions were done quickly to get the mock on rebrickable, which is fair enough, and I also appreciated the specific guidance in making the connection for the fins in step 113, which is very helpful. I think if the issues with sequencing get sorted, then these instructions will be very good. Simply due to the trickiness of the fin connections, I think this model is best suited for builders with a bit of experience, as I can definitely see this being frustrating for newer builders. This model has some limited swishability, but it should primarily be considered a display model. Casual handling, like I've done throughout this video, is fine, and it's reasonably solid if you pick it up by the top here, and also reasonably solid and stable if you hold it by the bottom fins like this. Unfortunately, the missiles do kind of get in the way if you're trying to support the fighter from underneath, so you have to be a little careful of that. And the engine and connections aren't particularly strong, um, so I do think that from the top here is the best way to pick this up. And you can also, like I said, cradle it in your hand if you want to swish it lightly. But a piece of the missile just came off, so where your fingers go, that's the danger there. Like I said, these fins are toe ball connections and they're easy to bump out of alignment. Uh, in my Instagram picture, someone commented that it looked like my fighter had scoliosis because the top fin was crooked in the picture, and it's actually quite difficult to get them back into alignment without taking the whole thing off, which is what I ended up doing, and it looks like I still didn't get it quite right. Eh, it's not too bad right now. These connection points at the back are fairly tenuous, so while you're trying to manipulate the toe ball connections to straighten this out, uh, you are likely to pop off the 1x1 one one round plate with bar handle, which is very inconvenient to get back on. When I was doing this, basically I tried to take only one of these off to straighten it out, and the whole thing ended up kind of coming apart. Um, so I had to reassemble all of it, but on the flip side, or on the bright side, it allowed me to kind of straighten out uh, the other fins, and you can see I did not do a very good job on this one, because it is rather crooked. Uh, that also might be to me handle it might be due to me handling it a bunch for this review. Oh well. Moving to the missiles, for some reason these minifigure spears don't really fit in or, or don't there's no clutch, almost no clutch in uh, the 
brick with fin, which is a little surprising, uh, because the cone connection, if you put it in here, it has clutch. Um, but for some reason, these holes are just a little large. And I tried this on some other brick with fins, and it still had the same thing, so I don't think it's just me. Uh, so that's very interesting to me. Uh, so as a result, these, these minifigure spear tips fall out all the time. And like I said, a stand for this model would be really nice. There's no obvious connection point. Um, hopefully Grender or maybe someone else can come up with a good solution for it. But it sits pretty well on the bottom fins, and it doesn't seem to affect the integrity of the missiles, because the missiles are slightly uh, raised into um, this little area between, so the flat surfaces is, you know, here, and the missiles are just above it, so you're fine there. In conclusion, while this model's instructions could use a second look, I think overall it looks great, and it's one of the best looking tri-fighters I know of, and I did do a cursory search, um, and this seems to be the only one of the only ones with kind of a smooth exterior, so that's really great. I don't build many CIS models, and this one's going to look very good on the shelf until I need uh, a bunch of 1x1, 1x2 inverted brackets and dark bluish gray, of which there are like 26 of them. Anyway, as I said in the introduction, without any substitutions, I got 4 stores and $72 without shipping and tax, or about $101 with shipping and tax. With the screwdriver and the color substitutions for the flower and all of the white pieces, I got four stores and $59 without shipping and tax, or about $87 with shipping and tax. And then turning to pick a brick, my pick a brick total was $42, and that included free shipping and handling, uh, but did include the tax. And brick length, the remaining pieces ran me three stores and $8 without shipping and tax, or about $26 with shipping and tax. And the total, therefore, was $68, which is $33 less than if I had only gone with BrickLink. Instructions for Grenther's Droid Tri-Fighter cost 5 British pounds, or about $6.18 in mid-June 2023. There will be a link to the instructions in the description below. Thanks, as always, for watching my review of Grenther 23's Droid Tri-Fighter. If you've built the model, you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, please let me know in the comments. Remember to leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel, or follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, and I hope to see you back next time.